Welcome, everybody, to episode two of Your Distant Neighbor, where we like to bring on some local guests from around Arizona doing interesting things, and uh, sometimes it's local businesses, local charities. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined with Laura Witte. Welcome, Laura. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So I'm excited today because I've long been a fan of isolation tanks and have followed them for quite some time and have done a few float sessions. And this is kind of your area of expertise. You're in the process of opening up a true rest float spa. Is that correct? That is true. I love it. So why don't we talk a little bit just from the very beginning, what is... Do they call it floating? Is that is that the tone? The, we call the term? it floating. We yes. call it floating. Okay. So what is floating for someone who's never done it before? They have no idea. Is it a massage? Is it a, a pool? Let's talk about that. It is amazing mm. for starters. So we actually call them pods. The kind of latest and greatest version of what used to be called tanks are pods. And if you can imagine a great big egg with only 10 inches of water and more than a thousand pounds of Epsom salts in the water. There's so much salt in there, magnesium sulfate, which is the Epsom salts, that you can't help but float in the water. It's almost twice as salty as the Dead Sea. So you actually wow. float for an hour at a time, and it's it's really a phenomenal experience. It takes away all gravity, and um, the magnesium sulfate, the Epsom salts, gets absorbed into your body through the skin, it's amazing for pain relief because it calms down inflammation. So a lot of people come to us because they have back pain or maybe they have arthritis, uh, all sorts of physical ailments. And, um, and then the other two common, most common reasons people come to float with us is because it really helps you to sleep better at night. And also it just helps with stress. It gets the brain into a, a deeper brainwave state yeah. from that fast beta wave to the deeper theta wave state and um, it's just tremendously calming relaxing and uh, pretty much you feel like a rock star after floating <laughs> I that is 100% true and so it's a it's a basically a tank right it's it's an egg shaped pod kind of pod yes. pool. <laughs> pod I guess pods the correct term and uh, so it's got the the salt so you're floating mm -hmm. so you're floating and then the water is skin temperature, correct? That's correct. As opposed to body temperature, it's skin temperature, which is 93 degrees. And that's part of the sensory deprivation experience. So if there's nothing that's changed from what your skin already is, then it's just the most calming, relaxing environment. So the temperature um, is very neutral, and, um, and there's no outside stimulus. So if you're comfortable, you can turn the lights off. And um, we do we provide the music. You can just allow us to be the DJ. So okay. the sort of standard is 10 minutes of music as you start your float to just help you to calm down and relax into it and then silence. And then, again, we turn on the music the last five minutes of the float to help bring you back out of it. And uh, during the silence is when you can just really go within and um and it's kind of like going back into the mother's womb. It's just the most comforting, nurturing, relaxing environment. Right. And so sensory deprivation. So so I, the body temperature, the skin temperature, water, you really can't, the idea is you really can't feel much, right? Right. If you're advantageous enough or adventurous enough, you can turn the lights off. And mm -hmm. so you don't really see anything. And you're floating, so your head and your ears are underwater, so you really don't hear anything, right? Correct. So it, what's the explanation? Is it just our brains on a normal day-to-day -day basis are just always processing this information, whether we think about it or not? Like we're touching the table and we're seeing things and our brain's measuring stuff and we don't really get to turn it off. And this is kind of one of those few moments where we do. That is absolutely correct. There's so much stimulation in everyday life, no matter what we're doing. And this is most likely the first chance anybody will ever have to just turn everything else off and just be one with themselves. It's, a, it's truly a beautiful experience. So they get the opportunity to relax. I mean, it's basically they get to relax for an hour and, and it's, it's a, a different type of relaxation, right? You get to relax for an hour, and so that's a big part of the stress relief, just to take that time for yourself, and also the other benefits with the, the pain relief and, uh, and better sleeping as well. 
I love it. I love it. And maybe talk a little bit about, so, you know, you guys are called a float spa. Maybe talk a little bit about, and so you guys, your location is, is planning on launching here in the next week or two. Mm-hmm. What do you, how, what's the experience like for the consumer? I mean, you call it a spa. I mean, is it a, do they check in? Is there a waiting area? What's the room like? Is there 10 pods in a room? Maybe talk a little bit about that and I'll turn my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question because there are pods in other places. Like there's a physical therapy place in town that I've heard has pods and it's a you know very different environment. So the spa itself, you come into the lobby and check in and we have you just fill out a new client waiver and then we start the tour and we show you around a little bit. It, take you into the video room where you sit in zero gravity chairs. We call that your float before your float. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and you watch a brief video just to share more a little bit about what to expect and question and it it addresses questions, concerns, and such. And then we uh, we play some uh, some beautiful uh, videos for you just to relax for a few minutes until we continue the tour. And uh, we go back into the float pod area. Now, everybody has their own private room. So, and every room has both a shower and a pod. So uh, there's no concern about privacy or anything like that. You lock the door behind you. And we give you all the general information that you need. And so you'll shower to get any products or body oils off of you. And, and uh, that's for the consumer, but then also the people after you, right? So the the pods are clean because everyone showered beforehand, that kind of thing. Right, and we should talk about cleanliness as well after we yes continue this because that's a big question that a lot of people have. So you shower off, and um, and we uh, we provide earplugs so that you can put those in. We also provide Vaseline, which is kind of like a liquid bandage. So if you have any cuts or scrapes or anything like that, um, then you can apply that. And then you get in the pod, and that's when you float for the hour. And as I said, you allow us to be the DJ. And we, we can take requests if you have any anything in particular. You can bring your own music as well, but we have everything provided for you. And um, so you float for an hour, and then when your time is up, the music will come back on for those last five minutes. The filter will come on when you're done, and you actually shower again to get all the salt off of you and get dressed. We have a prep room that you can go into afterwards if you like, if you want to fix your hair or anything like that to get ready for the rest of the day. And then we're building a beautiful oasis room so that you can relax, sit down, have some herbal tea, and just kind of integrate what just happened because a lot can happen in the pod. And it could be a bit jarring to go from the pod to the parking lot. So you can just (laughs) sit and relax for a while. And we really do encourage you to take your time after your float to integrate what just happened. Yeah, I really like the idea of the music too. I mean, I think, especially at the end, right? It's the five minute music, it's kind of like that alarm, but you ultimately throughout the whole session is you don't have to worry about when is my hour up, right? Right. Um, and, and the rooms are private, and so there are the shower. And I, I, so talk maybe a little bit about the cleanliness. Is that a concern for some people? or A lot of people ask about the cleanliness, and so there's a number of things that, uh, that we do. So first of all, the natural salinity of the water with that much Epsom salts, there's nothing that can grow in that environment. Right. And on top of that, we have a state-of-the-art filtration system that runs for about 20 minutes between each client, and it's an amazing filtration system. Okay. So it really just cleans the water um, to a wonderful degree. We also use ozone and UV light as well. It's probably the most pristine water you will ever be in. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And then so maybe talk a little bit too about because I'm, I'm, and what we'll do is I'll put a photo if you have one on the site as well. So people are listening to this, they can see a photo of the actual pod. Sure. Um, I think it's larger than most people realize, right? I think a lot of people <laughs> think of a bathtub, but you actually have space to kind of float around, right? There's actually quite a lot of space. So my husband is six foot eight, and he has plenty of room to spare. Okay. So um, we, uh, we have had a number of athletes come to float. In fact, when uh, the Super Bowl was here this past year, um, tons of the uh, the athletes came to float, and uh, and nobody's ever had a problem. So it's it's actually quite large. Yeah, and and so you get in, and there's that kind of hatch, and you have the ability to basically shut yourself in. The lights are off, right? Um, are there light? There are lights in the beginning and at the end as well. Is that correct? So you have total control over the lights. We'll have the lights on for you, 
at the start of your float. And then if and when you feel comfortable, you can turn those lights off and you have full control over the lid as well. So if you have claustrophobia, for example, you could leave the lid all the way open during your float. Or if you're just a little bit concerned, a nice trick is to put a, a rolled up towel between the pod and the lid so that there's just a couple of inches, but it's not all the way closed. That's also a nice trick for some people. Um, they tend to get a little bit warm in the pod, just happens yeah. on occasion. And so that can be helpful for either mild claustrophobia or if you just want a little more air circulating for any reason. Perfect. Why don't we talk a little bit about, I mean, some of the experiences people have. Or, or, so I've done the floating twice, and it's really, it's hard to ex describe, right? I mean, do, do you have trouble describing kind of what the experience is like? Because it's, it, it's relaxing, right? But it's more like, it's kind of a, a not an easy way, but almost a way to what I would imagine meditation is like, you know, some people do some, some form of meditation or they close their eyes in the beginning of the day and they visualize how their day is going. And there, I know there's a number of people who struggle with that type of thing because they have problems blocking everything else out, right? There's cars in the street or you can feel your feet on the ground or your fingertips distract you or whatever that looks like, or, or your mind races. This kind of, to some degree, forces you f for an hour to stay relaxed. You're brain it's gonna it starts to wander a little bit because it doesn't have too much to focus on in the beginning but then as you start to relax you kind of get into that deeper state of I mean I'm not sure what to call it besides relaxation right <laughs> yeah so for people who do meditate our our little joke is that you don't meditate in the pod the pod meditates you <laughs> <laughs> it does help you to go quickly into that deeper brainwave state and it is so incredibly relaxing yeah you know, I do notice that, at least for myself, my mind still tends to wander. And so there are a couple of tricks for that. Uh, some people like to count. What I like to do personally is set an intention for my float. And I'll pick a word. It could be something simple like love or peace. And whenever I notice that my mind starts to wander, I'll just come back to that word. And it just helps me to calm down, remember why I'm there, just go within. And it, it just really helps to take away the, the mind chatter that's so easy to get yeah. caught up in. We have enough of that in our lives. And it really helps me to be able to enjoy the float a lot more. Have you had any, maybe, do you want to talk to me about any of the experiences you've had in the pod? I mean, so I've heard of, and and I don't want this to discourage anyone, but um, you know, there's obviously the sense of relaxation. There's been people who have had somewhat hallucinogenic experiences, correct, in the float. And that's just part of your brain, uh, you know, walking away with it. One of the experiences I had, which I enjoyed, and again, I don't want this to discourage anyone from trying it. I was floating. This was my second time doing it. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I think I just kind of forgot about everything. I forgot I was in the pool. I forgot I was in the room. And it just kind of felt like I was flying, right? <laughs> and um, I remember almost spinning head over feet in just flying. I was flying and spinning head over feet, and I was enjoying it. And I did that for several minutes. And that sounds... And I was completely sober for anyone who question, <laughs> questions uh, that aspect of it. Um, it. And I think it's interesting to see where your, your brain goes and, and what can happen when you start to turn off some of these other measurements. And I, I think a lot of people forget, again, going back to your brain is always constantly measuring things. It's measuring the distance to the walls and to the door. And uh, you're constantly taking in sounds and feeling things, you know, the clothes on your body. And, and we've kind of learned to block that stuff out, right? Yeah. Because it's important, but it's not immediately important to our survival. But when we kind of focus our brain in, we can have some of these kind of unusual experiences, but it really becomes kind of a level of meditation, a level of uh, relaxation. I think you explain it far better than I could. <laughs> uh, and it's true. People do have wild experiences in the pod. I, I have myself. And I really just turning everything else off and just letting yourself go wherever it may be. You know you're in a safe environment. And whatever may happen, it's part of the healing process. Floating is so tremendously healing. And I don't fully understand all of it. But what I can tell you is um, I've heard the Navy SEALs are now using floating 
for PTSD. Oh, wow. Uh, there's a lot of research happening right now on floating for depression and anxiety with wonderful results. Um, people with medical challenges that are hard to treat by the traditional medical community, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, etc., even things like rheumatoid arthritis that uh, is tremendously challenging and painful, people are getting so much benefit from uh, from all sorts of different challenges that they have, and it's it's really remarkable. So wild things can happen in the pod. Healing can happen in the pod. Uh, it's it's just a wild experience. It's tremendous. Yeah, and I guess maybe the other way to describe it, it's kind of like a, a lucid dream a little bit, right? Yeah. It, it, it's kind of a little bit, uh, y- you know, you're in control. I mean, and that's the thing too. It's not like you, it's, you don't fall asleep in these things. You're awake, you're present, you know, at any point in time, you can open the thing up and turn the lights on. Uh, But it's a little bit like a relaxing kind of daydream, almost a a lucid daydream. And it, so the one thing I heard, and maybe I just heard this is one hour in the pod is equivalent to like two or three hours of of sleep or like a two or three hour nap. Is that correct? You know, I think there's some validity to that. I've even heard people say, wow, an hour in the pod is equivalent to eight hours sleep. (laughs) I think that could be perhaps a bit of an exaggeration. But I do think that uh, we get tremendous um, uh, benefit from going in the pod where, uh, you know, if we're tired or just need to take a little break, um, it's it's really amazing. I know that when I get stressed out, I have two babies at home, and uh, sometimes when I just really need to get away, I hand the kids to my husband and uh, just go in the pod. And whether I sleep or not, I yeah. feel tremendously rejuvenated, relaxed. And yes, I do fall asleep in the pod sometimes. And there's no <laughs> concern of drowning. If you flipped over, the salt water would get in the eyes and that would be pretty darn uncomfortable. So, uh, so no concerns. People fall asleep in the pods all the time. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. When, if someone does get salt water in their eyes, I know that's, is that part of the instructional? Cause do you guys have the, uh, the squirt bottles, right? We do. So there's fresh water squirt bottles in every pod. So if you did get any salt water in your eye, you could just grab the squirt bottle and cleanse your eye out that way. So what, I guess my, my next question is more about you and, and Alden. How did you guys stumble into this? Uh, have you guys floated for a really long time? Is it uh, like a friend convinced you to try it and you guys <laughs> fell in love? I mean, you guys are starting the, uh, a whole center out. It's pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. It's been quite a journey as well. So my husband, Alden, got a Groupon. This was, gosh, probably like five years ago or so. <laughs> and uh, so he went to try it. Darn Groupon. I know. <laughs> and he absolutely thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread, like no question. And he got so excited about it. Now, he gets excited about a lot of things, so I didn't really pay that much attention at first. But he literally was telling everybody he knew about True Rest and floating and sending so many people to them. And uh, he really just... It, <laughs> it really started something, and um, and they got a tremendous amount of business. And over time, Alden befriended the owners of the original True Rest in Tempe, Nick and Holly. And uh, so about another year or two passes, and the pods that they were using in Tempe, they were getting from Europe. They were uh, uh, quite pricey, and uh, they had some challenges with repairs, that type of thing. And so they decided, you know, we need to figure out how to manufacture our own pods in the United States. And so they teamed up with a hot tub manufacturer, created their own pods, and Alden became the director of sales for the Flow Pods. Okay. So then he started working with people from all over the world who wanted to uh, start float spas and quickly realized that people were having challenges knowing how to run a float spa, how to make it you know, worth their investment, worth their time. More the business aspect of it? The business aspect. Okay. Yeah, absolutely the business. And so, uh, again, Nick and Holly at the original True Rest decided, you know what, we need to figure out how to franchise so that we can teach people how to run a float spa successfully. And so before it even was a franchise, Nick and Holly talked to us about this and offered us the chance to jump on board. And I actually said no at first. <laughs> I've had a very successful 15-year career in healthcare and academia. And um, it's, you know, very steady income, health insurance, all of those right, things. Right. And uh, I didn't know how in the world we were going to open a float spa as far as the financial aspects and how in the world can we pull this off. But I sat with it for a few days. 
And I was gone from the house 50 hours a week um, with work. And um, that just, it wasn't what I wanted to stay in for the rest of my career. So I just kept thinking about it and thought, well, you know, if we take out loans, if we do this, if we do that, is there any way we can make this work? Yeah. And so we decided to go for it in that Alden would keep his full-time job and I would leave my career to run the float spa. So, so when did you guys make this decision? Was this, it must have been a while ago, right? It was about a year ago. Okay. And um, so I was on the faculty at A.T. Still University in the physician assistant PA program. And I actually resigned a few months ago to get everything up and running so that we could open our doors. Exciting. It's it's interesting. I, the one thing I kind of took from that, I took a lot of things, but it's interesting. You kind of turned it down and it stuck with you, right? It's, it's funny how those things tend to work out and it, it stays in the back of your mind. Um, so what would you say, so who's actually floating? And we talked a little bit about this before we started recording and I found it intriguing. What are the demographics? And then are we... Uh, are you seeing any surprises uh, with certain age groups or whatnot who are enjoying kind of floating around? The most common age group for floating is people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. Now, I think perhaps the group that would get tremendous benefit is folks who are a little bit older. If people have aches, pains, that type of thing, then uh, there's just so much benefit there. So I really hope that over time it spreads more and more to uh, to all populations, all ages. Do, do we think the, and sorry for interrupting you, the the medical benefits there, do we think that's the salt or the relaxation or a combination of both? Because I've heard like salt baths uh, being beneficial for like muscle soreness and whatnot. And, and is that the inflammation? Is that what you're talking about there? Great question. So often people will take Epsom salt baths, which are wonderful to do. And usually you put, you know, maybe a cup or two of Epsom salts in there. So if you can imagine that times like a zillion having, you know, <laughs> more than a thousand pounds, up to 1200 pounds of Epsom salts in there, um, the, uh, <laughs> the amount that gets absorbed into the body is, is really quite a lot. And so, so that helps to calm down the inflammation, um, reduces the pain. The relaxation portion of it is also a huge component as well. So I think it's the combination of the tremendous amount of Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate and, uh, and the sensory def- deprivation component of really just turning everything else off and going within, which of course is not something that we often yeah. get a chance to do for ourselves. Yeah. So you think there's a benefit for, for people who have those kind of pains, maybe the older generation? You were saying before, right now it's kind of primarily 20, 30s, 40s. Why is that just because it's, it's a new thing and... and is that what you think it is, or maybe the, the the younger the younger people are a little bit more adventurous, or no? It's it's new, it's sexy, it's interesting. Right. I think the younger folks might be a little more uh, apt to try it. Um, but you know, the floating industry is about where the massage industry was about twenty years ago. It's still new, and people are like, you know, what's going on? I'm gonna, you know, go into a pod and be in my birthday suit. You know, it can <laughs> it can sound a little bit strange, but. Um, but I think over time, as more and more people hear about it and get comfortable with it, this is a huge growing industry. And um, and it's really a trend in personal wellness. You know, a lot of people, if they're um, they're on a tight budget, this and that, they may cut back on their, their facials and kind of extra things. But this is considered more of a self-care, a wellness type of thing where uh, where people can actually see tremendous benefit and feel a whole lot better. And um, in fact, one of the reasons why I decided to do this, as we were talking about a moment ago, I've been in the allopathic medical world for 15 years now, and I don't always believe that prescribing medication is the best way to go. Certainly it has its place, but I've just seen so many people get off their medications by regular floating. And if there's a way that I can help people to heal in a more holistic way, I am 100% for it. What? What type of, so maybe let's jump in a little bit. So we've talked about aches and pains. Anything else that you've seen it act as a healing remedy for? 
Sure. So, um, so as we mentioned, um, the the pain relief is a big one, right. helping people to, people to sleep better at night, and um, and also the stress relief. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, people are using it for PTSD, for depression, for anxiety. It's also becoming really big in the sports world now, which okay. is uh, really fascinating. So a lot of the big sports athletes are starting to float before their big games, their football games, before the big fights with the MMA fighters. And, um, and it's really helping them to just ground and center and uh, mentally and emotionally prepare themselves for what's about to happen. And on top of that, they're floating after their big games or fights for the injury recovery component. This is really huge. I was just talking to somebody the other day who was a marathon runner and, uh, and just ran a marathon, hadn't really trained for it, though she is a runner. And, um, and just... <laughs> she, had, she hadn't really <laughs> trained for it, okay. Um, but... Uh, Came home and floated for actually several hours, went to sleep, floated again the next morning, and uh, and she had virtually no soreness at all. And she knows for a fact that it was a floating because she's run tons of marathons. And um, it just the injury recovery component is phenomenal. Wow. So she ran the marathon, <laughs> floated for a couple hours, and, and felt no pain. Interesting. Interesting. I'm wondering with the athlete thing too. I mean, so there's obviously the physical benefits. Is part of it too the visualization? So I mean, they talk about a lot with athletes. You know, visualize success, and that's you know it's recommended now for even the everyday individual to you know wake up and think about your day and um, or think about your week or your goals or whatever that looks like. And I know with especially a lot of high end athletes that are at the top of their class, you know, they go out there and they're not only practicing free throws, but they're visualizing the perfect free throw form. Is this kind of aiding them, do you think, in kind of that, again, blocking everything else out to be able to kind of practice that in their mind? I believe so. Absolutely. It's, it's so intriguing. And so there's the float spa. So maybe talk a little bit about where, where your location is and, um, where you guys are going to be set up and then maybe talk about some stuff doing the float spas in in the house and what that looks like. Absolutely. So we will be located in Gilbert, Arizona. We'll be at Gilbert Road and Baseline on the southeast corner right next to the Desert Schools Federal Credit Union. Perfect. Um, do you guys have a website for your location specifically, or is it just truerest.com? It's just truerest.com, T-R-U-E-R-E-S-T.com, and that's the corporate website. And so you'll be able to book floats at any of our location by going to the corporate website. Awesome, awesome. And then do you guys have a, a cost structure workout yet? For So, you know, what is one float cost? Is there a subscription? How does that work? Sure. So if you just walked in off the street, the float would be $79. Now we do run specials. For example, since we'll be open in a few weeks, our pre-opening special for the Gilbert location is buy one, get one free. Oh, excellent. And then what most people end up doing if they like floating, is getting a membership because that's really the most cost-effective way to float. And the price on that depends on how often you want to float. So, for example, if you wanted to come in and float once a month, it would be $59, or twice a month would be $99, four times would be $180. And the really nice thing about the Plus and Premium memberships is that you can share them with immediate family members, so spouse, sister, brother, children, etc. Not that young children can float, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Adult yeah. children. Um, and uh, so it's really a nice, um, a nice way to continue the benefits of floating to come on a regular basis. And a lot of people like to come in with their significant other or family member to float. Even though you have your own private floating room and shower, you come in together, you have your experience, and then you meet together afterwards in the Oasis room to share about your experience and just kind of relax and bond. And that's interesting. So you can do the membership and share it with a family. So, you know, if you had a family of four or uh, you could do, you know, a a membership that allows for four floats a month and you guys could all come in together at once. Is that correct? You can come in together at once, absolutely. Or you can come in at separate times. That would be just fine, too. You talked a little bit about the kids. I mean, what's the youngest that's recommended to float? I mean, is it teenager? So normally it's 18 and above, but we have uh, had a some interest as far as folks who are a little bit younger, um, as far as high school athletes and that type of thing. And so folks as young as 14 can float with parental consent. And so we would just have okay. both okay. the minor and the parent sign the waiver form. Perfect. So it, 
again, so the, the nice thing is, is you guys are opening up a float spa so you can go and, and you can try these things out and, um, experience it. But there's a lot of people in the floating community who actually own their own pod, right? Some people do. So what is that just, is that just ease of use? Is that those are people who want to do it on a regular basis? Is that, uh, what does that look like? So it's not that common, but it's certainly starting to pick up. I mean, they're pretty pricey and you really have to have the setup for it in your home. They're, you know, big and bulky and heavy and right. <laughs> uh, maintenance, that type of thing. But, uh, but, you know, I hear that, um, that Tom Brady, uh, has one in his home and, okay. um, and I know, uh, uh, one of the MMA fighters, uh, has one in his home. So I think it's starting to catch on and, uh, and folks who just see the benefit and want to float on a really regular basis and would rather have the convenience of having one in their home it's it's a great option um it's just expensive and and a lot of maintenance yeah i would imagine so you'd probably need a, a like a big extra room or like a big i guess like a really big laundry room or something huh a really big one and also a shower very close preferably in that room because when you get out of the pod salt's going to get everywhere that's a good point. So you'd need to literally be able to step from the pod into the shower, or there would be a lot of cleaning involved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've kind of touched on a little bit of everything. I mean, I guess the one thing is, is you know, it, for someone who's interested and, and hasn't done it before, but it sounds intriguing, uh, do you recommend it? Is it usually one time and... They see the benefits. Does it take usually a couple times? Is, are there any hesitations from from some people? I guess the one thing I'm thinking about is too is if anyone's um, is there any trepidation if people are scared of the water or uh, is, does that ever cause any kind of anxiety for people? You know, the first time you float is always kind of the strangest because you don't know what to expect. It's a new experience, so it can be a little bit unusual. And we always say that the second float is better than the first. You know what to expect. You can just relax into it right away. So we always, always recommend that folks come and float at least twice. And uh, the first time is is really just getting used to it. Now, don't get me wrong. You can experience tremendous benefit from the first float, Um, but each float just gets better and better. It's really remarkable how that happens. I just can't encourage enough for people to try it out. I mean, I, I'm trying to imagine myself if I've never heard of floating and I'm listening to this episode. I'm hoping we described it properly. It really is a unique experience. And ultimately, it's supposed to be relaxing, right? It's supposed to be a time where you can kind of gather your thoughts and uh, you're not worried about the email or the phone going off. You're not worried about, it. and you know, I would maybe equate it to maybe some of that relax relaxation that you get from a massage, but it's just on a different kind of level. And it just really provides for a unique experience. And I don't think I've ever heard anyone who's tried it and then hated it or, or didn't like it. Or, I mean, are there some people who it's just, it's not their thing or? That's true. For some people, it's not their thing. For some people, it's really hard to calm their mind down. And, uh, their whole life is revolving around, you know, perhaps being just super busy, being in their head. And it's, it's super hard. It's like coming up against a brick wall when we ask our brains just to really relax and shut down. And, and some people that's really tough. Now, one trick, you just mentioned a, a massage a minute ago is to get a massage right before floating. It is the most amazing combination okay. to massage and then <laughs> float. It's like um, on my last birthday, I did. Uh, I went to a yoga class, then got a massage, then went to float. It was heavenly. <laughs> I'm going to have to try that one time. I'm going to have to try that. So I'm intrigued. So we talked a little bit of how you guys got to owning the floats. Well, how long have you and your husband lived in Arizona? For about 10 years, he's probably been here for 20 or so. We met here in Arizona. Okay, so you guys met here. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, wow. Okay. We don't, I don't think we get a ton of uh, South Carolina folks out here, do we? Not too many Carolinians. (laughs) It's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting transition. And and so the, the place is in Gilbert. You live in Gilbert, is that correct? I actually live in Chandler. Oh, wow. Okay. So you live in Chandler. I, one thing I'm intrigued about, I mean, so we're sitting in the Chamber of Commerce right now yes. in Gilbert. Yes. 
And you talked a little bit about you do a uh, networking group here. Is that correct? Yes. The Gilbert Chamber of Commerce is very active and uh, just a group of wonderful people. We all try and support each other's businesses here in Gilbert. And, uh, and it's just been great to be a part of this organization. It, I, I'm always intrigued by some of, you know, the Chamber of Commerce specifically. Is I think every city pretty much has one. And I don't think they get utilized quite as much. I take that back. I think they maybe get utilized more than people think. But at the same time, I don't think they're utilized enough. And I didn't realize that you can just kind of call. And, and do you have to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce to like use? And we're in, sitting in one of their conference rooms right now. Is that part of the – or do you just have to be a resident of Gilbert? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, but I asked and they said, absolutely. You're more than welcome <laughs> to use our conference room. But I am a member. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So – Living here for as long as you've lived here, what any uh, unsung heroes, any secrets, any good uh, restaurants you recommend for people, either in Gilbert or Chandler? Or? Restaurants. My two favorites are Sakana for sushi. Okay. Okay. Where's that located? There's at? one here in Mesa, and um, well, not we're in Gilbert right now, but uh, but there's one fairly close in Mesa, and there's one in Ahwatukee. and my other favorite is Pomegranate Cafe, and uh, that's in Ahwatukee as well. I unfortunately have never tried either of those, and I'm going to have to check them out. I'm going to have to check them out. It's worth it. I love it. I love it. I'm trying to think. Anything else that anything else we haven't touched in regards to the float spa in regards to uh, the business? And uh, you guys are obviously excited. We're super, super excited. You know, I think the biggest thing um, is that it's hard to even visualize when we're talking about it yeah. and hearing it. Uh, auditorily. So um, so just going to truerest.com and getting a visual, everybody is more than welcome to just come in and check it out um, just to get a little tour, see what it's all about. Um, certainly, if anybody has any questions, feel free to call me. My number is 480-219-7990. And happy to answer any questions. Um, you know, we're running that buy one, get one free. I can set that up. How long are you guys running that for? Until we open. Okay. And then we'll have various specials going on after we open. We'll be running Groupon, uh, Groupons here and there and, um, and doing other promotional things. So, um, so certainly there'll be opportunities. And we always have a $59 new float special. So if okay. you've never come into float okay. before, you can always take advantage of that just to come and try it. See what you think. I like it. So in, if you can, if you, we can send me maybe a, a photo of the pod because I want to put that on the website and then we can do uh, maybe even a description and we'll make sure to put your phone number and the website in the description of the podcast. So if you guys are listening right now, uh, you hit the description button, you should have the links available and uh, Laura's phone number as well if you have any questions. And I'm excited. I'm excited to check out the place and I think we're going to have to do another episode when you guys are a few months in and we can talk about how everything's going and we can check in. That would be great. I'd love it. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for coming on. It was an absolute pleasure and uh, keep up the good work. And I, I really think that this is something that's going to take off, uh, not only for you guys, but for the Valley. And I think the more people that start to experience what f the benefits of floating uh, from kind of the, the full spectrum, whether it's just simple relaxation to visualization to the healing aspect of it, I think it's something that's much needed. And I'm surprised it's taken five years for it to kind of explode a little bit here in the Valley as it has. How many locations? I know you guys own, are opening up the Gilbert location. How many locations Valley-wide? As of today, it's just the Tempe location that's open. But corporate is opening another store in Scottsdale. I hear there's one coming in, I don't know, Glendale or somewhere up there. And there's one uh, potentially in Chandler in the works. So there will be a few of us around the valley. And, you know, I think it's um, I think it's going to be needed because the word is really starting to get out now. Just in the last few months, we've been in Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, Vogue. We were just in Yahoo um, the other day, and it, it's really starting to catch on. Wow. I, yeah. I, I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you so much, Laura, for coming on, and I appreciate it. Oh, thank it. you so much. It's been a pleasure.